recording. Okay, one of these days we'll get to 8, 8 a.m. ordering parts in the morning, preparing. But yeah, I'm gonna try to do, try to get back to 8 a.m. on schedule. Okay, so we wanna respect the time. Um, so today we're gonna go through, we're uh, continuing design, design work. Last week we, we began an actual build work. There's some of those videos are posted up. Um, to follow the, the program, the wiki page that's relevant for, for us right now is 120design uh, 120 Design Lessons, day four. You can take a look at my log, I'll paste it in the, in the chat. Uh, but we're putting the working doc in there, so there's the working doc. So everybody please, uh, to follow the video, you can take a look at this, your screen on a share of the, the meet.jitsi uh, Jitsi window. Okay. Uh, so on the design lessons, look at this. So there's a working doc, and then there's the schedule for the next 10 days. Now, um, as far as organizing things, that we're trying to use templates, take notes, t put links to people's videos. Can people, uh, whoever is doing that, shut their, down their volume? Um, if you're joining the Jitsi, just mute. Mute yourself? Yeah, outside of the speaker. Mute yourself. Um, yeah, so where to start? We want to review on a, yes, last week we, we were working on, it's, it's a lot of confusion when you start, start getting into it and you see that there's uh, the details on how we build the wall modules for the CDCO home. Uh, we're going to continue on that and, and try to get really clear on on the design of each module, there's 48 for the exterior walls and, and to building them because uh, once you start building, you can't just say, oh, I think this is good or, you know, it's a half inch off or whatever. You have to be very exact. It's, it's the kind of stuff where if you don't get it, uh, if you don't do it properly within a CAD or if you're working off bad blueprints, you're talking about wasting a lot of materials because hardware now gets expensive and this is not software. We're, we're building real things. So when we do this, we, we really verify and make sure we're doing we know what we're doing in terms of the design. And we went through some, some details of, of um, discrepancies between the notes. And especially if you work as a large group, it's, it's hard to keep track of it. So uh, the best proof, proof point is that every person understands the simple principles to, to, verif to, self, to have the whole design be self-verifying in a, in a way. So today I'll go through the, the wall modules again to the point that in the morning session, uh, once again, let's do. Let's see if we can fill the the whole CAD uh, CAD part library, as with the intent of getting clarity on the actual design when we're building in a workshop. So that that would be the goal. Um, not only are we generating documentation for the entire house as a product, but also when we go into the workshop, all of us want to have have practice. And the practice you can get is actually on CAD if you actually build the things from uh, from scratch. And um, we should be able to do, if we do part libraries properly, um, meaning downloading the designs of common parts within all the wall modules, because the idea is the wall modules are quite similar, all of them, right? Now, certainly the, the windows and doors are quite different, but most of the modules are, are the same or similar, and therefore when we design them within CAD, we can be uh, picking from libraries where we say, okay, we download this whole thing that's the same, and then we may maybe make some modifications. And with that kind of process, if we have a number of people here, we can actually effectively divide that uh, and try to get to the completion of the CAD, because the CAD, if we go to, share my screen, go to the uh, CAD page on the wiki, and how do people find that? How do you find the CAD page? Uh, in the design lessons, if you go into that document, uh, there are there are a few links on the on the first page. For example, um, click on long. No, that's not not the one. But like for example, window. Uh, to get to the CAD, it's CDK Home 2 development template, and then you um, so do a bookmark so that when we go into this, since we're working on the CAD very actively, that's where you're uploading. Put a bookmark to it um, here. I'm going to the development template, go to, to the CAD, 
And what is the status right now? I still see a bunch of, let's see, um, anything that's once again in red, it's still not filled out. It needs to be done. So there's a bunch in a free CAD that needs to be done. And we were working off uh, the build cheat sheet orientation for, for role division. Uh, the build cheat sheets. Uh, let's put a link to those. Those were, once again, I, I always go through the development template and I, I know they're under the build instructions, so, that, so that's build cheat sheets. Let's paste that into the working doc. They're right there for the, for the orientation on which module is, is which, because they're, they're numbered in the wiki part library but you have to know what they correspond to within the house so the first picture on the wall module build cheat sheets shows okay modules 1 through 23 that's the first floor then on uh, page 2 page 2 you've got uh, page 1 is 1 through 23 page 2 is 1 through 23 also but that is because we're dividing cut lists and, and build instructionals and CAD so the first first picture is actually the people that are working on CAD the second slide is people who are working on actual build cheat sheets which means the next step after CAD which is your cut list that you can extract all your parts from the cut lists and then we go into the second floor 25 to 48 uh, 20 or 24 through 47 and then interior panels but for the orientation of what is what these are uh, these are the the numbers here so especially at the very end of the CAD I believe there's yeah there's a whole whole bunch of, at the end it's all blue it's all blue okay so we've got a team of seven right people right here and within that we can we can tackle them and if you if you do this properly it should take uh, once we get the hang of it like maybe if you start completely from scratch and you're just drawing up here's a two by six or whatever uh, you've got like 10 or 20 20 or so maybe pieces you got the blocking and the framing and so forth uh, from scratch it will take you about an hour if you go from from part libraries, it will take you less, maybe 15 minutes, down to as little as 15 minutes. Say you take the entire outside frame, or you take a, a module that's similar, or you download, there's different ways to do it. You can download modules in the sense, okay, I'm gonna take down, download the entire outer frame, which you know is the same for everything. If it's an eight foot module, everything, everything except the one of the corners, uh, the short corner modules, they're not going to have that kind of a frame, but you know that that's valid for like 40, 40 out of all the modules. You've got that square frame. So you, you're talking about the depth of modularity, like w at which point are you actually getting the common stuff, common materials, so that you can design it effectively as a team. Like you have to think about, okay, where is the, uh, what's the breakdown? Uh, how can we most effectively design using part libraries? So, so the first thing to look at would be when we're designing these these build cheat sheets or or instructionals or CAD itself as a team so for team CAD uh, you want to do things like part work from a part library so if we had to make like an entire village made of these houses and we had a thousand people you know let's take a look at the limits of this of a thousand people in a stadium or ten thousand people in a stadium it's not a football game it's a design session for for a new village uh, for for prosperity next door somewhere on a chunk of land that we just got this is to say that's an event in the future uh, ten thousand people we've got a village we know that these wall modules are just about identical so there's a lot a lot of repetition but if you want a full digital model um, you still want to generate if, if you want to actually a technically correct model you you, you want to divide those roles and then you pick parts from part libraries like for example you don't want to have people unless they're learning from scratch you don't want to have them draw out the sketch extrude it make a two by four piece of lumber or a two by six piece of lumber get that out of a part, part library so where is that part library we already have 
thing called Architecture Part Library. Uh, and that's just started, but uh, there's already a few of the pieces there. So if you type in Architecture Part Library, there's there's a bunch of stuff. And, and then you can look at, okay, what are the things that we already use? And then maybe we can create another library that's super dedicated to the CD Cajon, which is, or just for the wall modules, wall module part library, you can maybe set up a new page for that, but organize it in an easy way to access. But here in this library, we already have <clears throat> the kind of stuff we use. Two by, two by six, top plate, two by six, top plate, um, two by four, blocking for uh, split two by four blocking, eight foot stud under the header, nine foot two by six precut stud, uh, precut studs, eight foot precut studs. So we want to get clear on okay, what are what are the component members of all the modules and create a dedicated part library. So probably um, uh, right on the architecture part library page, we could probably do something useful like because already there's other things like the roof sections or the angle that I was working on for for example for the 3d printer heated chamber so we should say wall module part library um, and then start seating it there so so that we can pick off like I could for example just copy from the gallery down there mm, control C Uh, we're talking about creating an infrastructure which makes it very easy for us to understand and build a module. So if we if we make that the most transparent possible, uh, we can do it. So so instead of uh, so in that wall module part library, we're gonna have uh, get rid of all this stuff that's the roof metal, hurricane ties we don't need at this point. Um, so so we can start prioritizing in this library how we go go about selecting parts for, for the wall modules. So um, this is going to be our assist here. We, we can download each of these files, use merge into a current document, and then we, we build the modules in CAD uh, if you have the existing part libraries. And I mentioned that it would be useful to have a module part here that's just external frame. The four pieces right that are right there, that's not there. So someone should create it. And that way, you're like 50% towards building a wall module in five seconds. Uh, so that's how we can modularize and make this process fast to make it effective for a large team to do this quickly so that we can fill in like there's a whole load of empty files right now. Once we get oriented, okay, what is this wall module? Is it a window? Is it a door? Is it a plain wall? Is it a corner? So you have to get oriented using the the icon for the house with the modules 1 through 48 and 69. Uh, orient yourself on that. Use the part library. Upload. Then the finished products are at the the CAD Seed Home 2 CAD page. So all those reds should turn into blues pretty rapidly if we're all oriented well on it. Uh, once we seed the proper library, uh, say the frame, or yeah, frame, then download some studs. Maybe we could have, uh, we have to think about what are the most useful modules to have in order to make the <coughs> workflow most efficient. So then we can do it in rapid time. And so in our design, so after we, we're done with the, the session here, let's work on that library so that we make the most complete parts that we can then continue to modify. And we can have an, even have complete modules, like this is the plain wall module. Because if you notice that, oh, well, there's plenty of those, then completing one of these reds for files is as simple as uploading the identical copy of that. And just to explain, well, why do you want to do that? Why do you want to repeat yourself? Well, they might be identical now, the framing. Because uh, right now we're working, we're pretty much starting the CAD on the framing that we're building in the shop. We're we're getting into the shop and we're actually doing this later on in the day. Well, later on it's gonna might become different, like the like it might have some electrical in there that's different, or it might have some plumbing, or it might have some aperture for 
a wall outlet or a vent or something so we leave it at this level right now at the end of the day it'll probably probably be different or maybe not but likely so so the thing we need to do is understand how to, how are you designing these wall modules so let's talk about let's just kind of review some of this uh, about the walls we mentioned about first floor is nine foot tall modules second floor is eight foot tall modules and what are the components in each components are uh, once we get to the details what we're worried about right now is the framing and blocking the sheathing exterior and the one detail about so to understand the module parts the sheathing that we build for the exterior is actually not exactly what we get from the store those are overlapping panels and because we're building individual panels we have to cut off the lip because the panel is actually four four feet and a tiny bit so we got to trim them all down to exactly four feet uh, because we're not doing the overlapping part we are going to save a, a, a few of those because in the garage which doesn't have interior wall, wall structure we're actually overlapping the panels as they should be but in the main part of the house we're not because we're doing a parallel build workflow that allows us to do the rapid build and if if we wanted to overlap we would have to leave the sheathing off the front of the panel mm -hmm. but then you couldn't build much of the panel so so that defeats the purpose so we're deliberately cutting off the little lip now you could also use plywood or other materials but we're using this particular kind of plywood that's that allows it to overlap it's got the nice texture of the vertical lines <coughs> so um, so we cut the edge off except for 12 panels which are for the for the carport now the sheeting interior part of the of the modules is what we leave for later I put it in red because it's not for now the fasteners are gonna go in there screws <coughs> two and three and an eighth construction screws they don't have to be uh, <coughs> exterior grade because these panels are covered by sheathing so like after after the sheathing your interior but the 2.5 inch exterior screws have to be exterior screws because they go out actually on the siding exposed to the weather and then lag bolts are how we bond the the panels adjacent to one another we're also going to put sill seal which is a rubber not rubber but a foam foam gasket that's the width of the the panels five and a half inches we're going to put that around the side so that when panels butt up to each other you close off air gaps so we're going to put that on the side now on a bottom plate and on the top plate we're going to put more of that later on but don't worry about that right now but the sill seal is part of the actual module component of each wall now the batten is uh, when we have two panels next to each other we use a one by four batten screw that screw the edges together in, and under that batten so basically a long piece of bonding wood there's butyl tape which is which seals against water because you want to be watertight airtight between panels uh, so we're using butyl tape which is just this rubber rubbery tape if you screw through it it actually self seals around the nails so it's a water air barrier and use this the batten on that the house wrap goes uh, right under like right over the panel and under the exterior siding we use staples to do the house wrap and we put in the insulation and then if there's electrical and plumbing but the insulation point so up to eight and nine and ten is how we're gonna carry the panels up to the site that's all in there except for three and at that point panels are going to be between 100 and 200 pounds depending on if it's a window or a, d or a regular panel now so that's the module components in each wall the picture actually on the next page shows some of that there's the frame the insulation weather resistive barrier which is the house wrap just a very thin uh, breathable thing that it lets water wick down it and it lets lets uh lets vapor go in and out of it so you don't get condensation as bad if, if it condenses it's supposed to run out down it down to the uh, down the panels exterior sheathing and the missing details are the sill gasket this is actually what we did um, before we didn't use the sill gasket and what else are other changes in this one actually we're using one stud in the middle that's not how we're doing it right now and actually I don't think that's how we built the seed eco home one 
um, that's just representative of the frame. To show you the detail on slide five, this is what we're talking about. So there's the panels next to each other. This is how you bond them together. There's that self-adhesive waterproof tape that's called the butyl tape. It's SAWP. Uh, you can take a look at the link, what that is. You put that on the seams between two panels. So that's a top view of the panels, two panels coming next to each other. Uh, the outside is the treated texture plywood. And then there's the lag bolt mechanism, which bonds three of them that bond one panel to the next. So with three impact tool ratcheted lag bolts, we connect them together in a few seconds. Now, and then the house wrap is stapled on the inside and there's a little bit of house wrap tape uh, put, <clears throat> put on the inside. So you put in another layer. It's not like the heavy tape. It's not, if you puncture it, it doesn't it will get punctured unlike the self-adhering waterproof barrier it's self-healing self-sealing we're showing the nails going into the the studs here from the exterior plywood that, that would be screws for us and probably some nails at the end when we, we nail it all off at the very end we probably want to do like a minimum number of screws because they take much longer than a nail gun but at the very end once we know everything is correct we can probably nail it off um, at the end of the day so that's the, and this is the one by four, one by four batten here, this part right here. Uh, now, when we work in a workshop or however we do this on a site, how do we do this to store a hundred modules, not a hundred, but, but there's 69 altogether. How much volume do they take? Well, they're going to take about a half a foot each. So for 60 of them, you have about a, a stack of about 30 feet of them and they're four feet wide now just for practical considerations I mean that that gets pretty hairy in terms of material management you can put this outside a bunch of piles but if you if you get caught in the rain that's <coughs> not great and you want to have like right now as we're building them since we're not finishing them all yet I think it would be a let's check out the workflow let's let's make a rack effectively because in our workshop we have posts there every 16 feet let's make a rack that spans between the two maybe have like little dividers uh, like maybe the blocking that are cutoffs but Jeff maybe you can do that because like right now we have two piles on two tables but that's only 12 panels mm -hmm. that we've built so far and those piles are already as high as you can stack them so I mean you're gonna get into some material handling issues here just storage um, and we want to have it all accessible so let's do, I would say within um, what Prince's table is maybe set up like one one side and the other. So you have an aisle, I'm thinking about an aisle where you have a, a rack on one side where you can basically slip in the, the panels and they're standing vertically and you can pull any one of them and we can number them so we actually know which one is which. So that for example, when we're doing the, the electrical at the end, we can uh, do that very effectively. And maybe, um, you know, if we had the process more worked out, possibly we can say, okay, from instructions, we can, like if we had the complete instruction set right now, which we don't, um, we can probably say, oh, we just do that once and then possibly even store it outside. For now, as we, we've got a few more steps to go and we're learning about this, um, I'd say let's do that rack. So take like a long two by sixes or two by twelves together. We got to span 16, but basically if you walk in an aisle on two sides, one bay of 16 feet is going to get you that 30 feet. So that's what I'm thinking and see if we, we can do that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so, so uh, yeah. You put, a, put a board on the floor and one from the ceiling. I would hang it. So there's vertical columns that are made of wood. So just w why not span that and, and then have sticks coming down as a divider. Yeah, so let's draw that real quick on a document. So, so slide, new slide, material store. Well, let's see, let's get rid of that. Let's just have a simple concept of material storage. Um, slide, duplicate slide. What do you do for materials storage? So I'm thinking, You've got, so this is looking from the top. We've got a column, a column in the workshop. You got a second column in the workshop. 
and you've got this is uh, these four corners are a space of 16 by 16 feet that's the column spacing so what I'm suggesting is take a piece of wood or or, or screw together a couple of pieces of wood and make make a long piece of wood like that and then in order to make the panel stand against that I think it would be sufficient uh, it sounds like it if you just put a bunch of blocks like little projections here I mean short blocks mm -hmm. that if you put it in there it can't it can only fall side to side right right so as long as you have a short block um, every six inches you know give it a little bit space six or seven inches um, you got this basically this this rack where you can slip in your panels that's kind of what I'm thinking mm -hmm. uh, but that's a real con concern like for example if people are building this say on their own how do you do this if you don't have a lot of space where well, you have to have some place like you can probably leave it outside so what's, you the, cover what's the orientation the where's the of these posts this is looking from the top this is top view does that make sense mm -hmm. And what you, I don't know where Prince is working, so that's by the main where the red red drawers are. Red toolboxes. Okay. Yeah. So that bay. So uh, where we'd have the to red move that table be on this. Yeah, red toolboxes are here, so we're looking east there. So that's the toolboxes. So it would go where that table is then. Yeah, but the middle aisle would still give us twelve. Uh, so these panels are these panels are four feet so you got you still have like an eight foot eight foot w foot walkway in in, be in between after you put them in because they're only sticking out so much ah okay i got you so and you, you can you take any of them and you, and you put them inside yeah you slot them and we should slot them in the right number one through one through uh 61 mm -hmm. 69. Uh, now there's 40 you only need 46 47 because one is a double door so that's definitely not go we're not going to rack it in here so you need 47 plus 21 so it's 68 but the 21 last ones therefore just two by four wall panels so they can be a little more narrow or you can just keep it the same just, uh, but something like this that would that would work just in terms of material storage so our shortest panel is eight foot so top of this board to be a little less than eight foot. Say what? Our shortest panel is eight foot, so mm -hmm. the the height of this board would be. Do it uh, down the middle, four feet, just comfortable height. So we put the board up, you slot it in there, and it's held at the middle. So you basically got this, and it can't fall over. I'm thinking. You think that um, will work? Because it I'll can't go this way, because it's long. As long as you. So yeah. As long as it's not leaning over too much, it'll definitely stay there. Make those like the cutoffs we have. Uh, yeah. I thought that this post here would be behind the tool rack where all the tools are. Well, yeah, yeah, you're right. So that's that's an issue there. So so we don't have those posts here. Can you attach it to the tool rack some somehow or I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, we know we can do this one. Start on this one and then we'll figure out. Okay. Maybe we do just one on the other side of these ones. But then there's this thing here. There's, there's this router on that side. Unless we, can we move that router out of there? Uh, there's well, this router can, here. We might can make some room on the opposite side somewhere. Yeah. So um, yeah, but definitely we need some storage space like that. So if you can make these boards, okay, then we can hang them. Or maybe we're maybe not there, but we can hang them. So or figure out a way to hang them. Our panel is six inches and make them maybe nine inches apart or something like that. So you got inch all right, you just need like a half an inch of space, so not that much. If if the panels are going to end up being after you put the plywood on them, they're five and a half plus five eighths, so it's going to be just a little bit over six. So I wouldn't make it more seven. than like an inch, inch larger. So yeah, so make them seven inches. Plus that um, blocking. Oh yeah, so you, yeah, you got to consider where the blocking is on that. So but that's kind of a concept. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of where we can. Uh, stash a lot of the panels here stash them away um, so <coughs> what else what else on a on a build cheat sheet so let's talk about um, can I can I interrupt real quickly yeah go ahead <coughs> so then am I right then that it sounds like we would want to build this sort of uh, 
like structure that could hold these things <clears throat> that could be kind of built on site at different sites and, and that would be kind of critical to have that on hand uh, some covered thing like this is that correct or, or am i not yeah like on a site it, it all depends on on what your situation is like what exactly the framework for that the build is if you've got a big swarm of like you know say 24 people are up you don't really have to worry about this so much it no if you have the finished build instructions I think we want to get all the way down to the electrical and uh, then you stash the panels like directly on the trailers that bring it up to the site is what I would do if the site is not right there so say you're on site and you're building this on site when you're done with the panel move it by the wall where it's gonna end up or, or like a some some place where next to the walls where you're gonna you're gonna install them and put a tarp on it but the thing is because they've got insulation in them like it can't be sitting out there for a long time and it, it's raining uh, you will destroy the insulation so it's just a consideration for here for now as we're learning we, we got to set up these racks but probably in a in a real world I, I don't see us actually using that unless we're in a learning situation like this uh, where we're we're going step by step and maybe going through a whole batch uh, batch of process we're kind of batch it like here we're we're trying to batch it like okay we're gonna do all the framing because we can really learn that and get good at it and get quick at it so trying to to get the efficiencies on that um, in the particular work situation that we're at right now but what I definitely envision in the future you've got the full instructions and you just go all the way out out to the to the electrical and potentially plumbing and all the panels and, and and finished at that level at which point it's ready to go to the wall in which case you don't really need the racks because we're using the racks so that we can actually rework <coughs> add steps to the panel and make the panels readily accessible uh, okay. a part that that's useful about a rack system like that is that is just keeping order of the panels because if you put put the panels in a particular like when you're building them um, the challenge you have is okay where you're putting the panels and you put them on a pile you gotta put them in a certain order because they get put up into the building in a certain order so if you have the first panel that needs to go in a house on the bottom of a pile you're moving that and you're shuffling things around it just adds that work in our case here when we did the build it happened that the the first panel that we needed was like the last panel down at the workshop and we were pretty much like waiting for like an hour or two before we could start assembling the house so you know things like that of workflow uh, are important when you consider bottlenecks of which panel goes in first because the corner wants to go in first you start at the corners you don't put a panel in the middle you start at the corner because you know that's a that's a finish point and a good place to start does that address the question yeah yeah I think so, so okay yeah thank you so so we've got module components design rationale for the two-store wall wall heights we said that nine feet to make the house comfortable eight feet to make it easier because then we're starting to work at height um, and the finish point prior to installation is everything up to the electrical and plumbing if you wanted to do one on the ground, this would be an easy way to do it. Just two posts on the ground, a post across, yeah. and then brace back. Yeah, the take a side. picture and put it in a, put it in a dock if you can. Uh, so Jeff's just come up that. with... Yeah, you do. <laughs> Jeff just came up with, okay, here's two posts. If you just got to have, have this temporary structure on the work side, just put two posts in the ground and some support stakes, and that would be, be good enough. So yeah, this could be done in the field or in a workshop. Um, now the other part is just, yeah, before we go into the, the build, um, maybe we can just go review quickly for the plane wall modules. What are the absolute critical points that we need to know about them? Because we, we really have to cover there's six module types outside of the windows and doors, which we'll save for later. Uh, so maybe let's just review the, the checklist for each one. So as we get onto CAD today, hopefully we do that rapidly. We create the part library and then rapidly by knowing all the components that go into the wall, we can rapidly assemble them 
through CAD um, to get that, that part out of the way. So we get CAD practice and the actual real build. Um, we can extract the real build procedures verifying everything as, um, as we do that. So I'm going to start a few slides here. Um, what? Yep. Marge, when someone, um, I'd, I'm still a little yep. foggy on, on yeah. that, that process, and I, I'd love to, um, like, if, if someone who's familiar with the process does one of these and could, like, do, like, a screen yeah. like, a video, like, I'd love yeah. to see that go to help. Let's do it in real time. So why does why do, why don't we have? <clears throat> tell you what to practice the CAD collaborative CAD and concept work. Let's have have you do this. Uh, I'm gonna do the doc. Yes. Yeah, so this is good practice. And, and good point. Uh, new slide. Not new slide. Copy slide. Slide. Duplicate slide. We're gonna go very simply through. Here's a wall module, and you guys. Cat it up, or you don't have to cat it up. It's already at the at the wall um, architecture part library. If it's not added to it, but in the wall module part library, we have two by six short top plate. What does that mean? There's a corner module that's 42.5. So let's make that um, 42.5. Five inch top plate. You'll note when you go into the corner wall module detail, which is here on the first page there, corner wall long and short, you look at those details, uh, it's 42.5. So that's the one we're talking about right there. Second one is the usual top plate, top plate, bottom plate. Every single panel has it outside of the, two, the corners that we mentioned. The corners that don't have it total eight in number because uh, four on the first floor, four on the second floor. Uh, then this, the short blocking, two by four, 8.5. We'll notice that one of the corner panels has the short blocking. Uh, and what is this 14.5? It should be 14. The normal blocking we use to attach the plywood to should be 14. Why is that? So someone, someone downloaded and uh, fix it. It shouldn't be 14.5, it's, it's 14. It wants to download and fix it. So this is the part library we'll be working from, so um, let's fix it. Now, 8 foot under header stud. What are we... Uh, I want to take a look at just so for example you download it open up your FreeCAD app image um, under header stud. So there's a. I don't think we have to worry about this one. That's uh, headers are under windows and doors. Headers, because the door spans a certain amount, there's a lot of force on it. So you need a header to to carry that weight that's supported on the frame. So actually, I'm not gonna. Um, let's see. Open it under header stud. That thing is going to be, if you look at my picture, that's going to be like, the headers we use are 2 by 12 so this is going to be like a foot or so lower than whatever we got. If this is for the 8 foot modules, that this thing is going to be around 7 feet, around 84, let's just measure that. So these are the kind of verifications you could do, you kind of know what you're looking for here. Yeah, it's like 81 inches, that's under 7 feet. No, don't worry about this one. Under header stud, we should deprecate for, like we can arrange this. Under header stud, let's put it uh, towards the end here. So we're just shifting order, so you have easy access to see what what's at, what's where. Now the precut studs, yeah, those w we use everywhere. Nine foot two by six precut, eight foot two by six precut, eight foot under header stud. Don't worry about that. We have blocking. Did anyone download the blocking? Which blocking are you talking about? 
Uh, so blocking wall module part library. Sure. I'm on that. Split <coughs> two, two, two by four blocking 14.5. I don't like the 14.5. Didn't we say it's 14? Right? Um, how do you know it's 14? There's three cavities. Three times 14 is 42. <coughs> Four vertical members at 1.5 add up to a 6-inch mort for a 48-inch panel. 42 plus 6 is 48. So you got to do this in your head real quick once you get, get that these are all 48-inch panels. Um, so the 14.5, you, you can immediately flag, okay, that's not right. So that should be 14. Now where's my free CAD? Where did my free CAD disappear? My free CAD disappeared somewhere. Why? Don't know. Uh oh, am I crashing? Okay. I think. Um, yeah, it's a good idea to. Can you guys remote hear me still? Or no, you. I cut out. I think I crashed. I can hear you still. Oh, you can still hear. Um, well, I lost control over my desktop, though. It's not. It's not going back to. <laughs> mm, I need to <coughs> shut down and restart. I cannot get back. No, oh, no. Can I? Escape. 